Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Stuart. Stuart is from Birmingham in the UK, but he lives in Gibraltar. So, let's see what Stuart has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. How are you doing today, Stu? You okay? Yeah, very good, thank you. Good, very good. Thanks so much for taking the time in the evening for the interview. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Stu, before we start the game, just tell me um, where are you from? Uh, originally, I'm from England, a uh, place called Birmingham. Okay. And I believe you are living in, in Gibraltar now. I am, yes. Uh, I've been living in Gibraltar for about three months now. Ah, so it's not that long. No, very new. And why? Why Gibraltar? Uh, so originally, I was living in Malta uh, before. Um, and I've relocated my work to um, a new new uh, position here in Gibraltar. Okay, and what do you do for a living? I'm an iGaming analyst. Mm, tell me a little bit about your job. Um, so my, my job is basically um, working in iGaming, which is like online casinos and gambling industry. And it's in an operations-based role where I look after our, our customer service team. Oh, I see, I see. And um, what is the most interesting thing about your job, in your opinion? What do you like the most? I think probably dealing with so many different nationalities and different cultures and different people. Uh, there's around about 69 different languages within the company. Oh, wow. Um, it's quite a global company, so you're dealing with many different markets and different cultures and different people. So there's that experience of learning how everyone interacts with each other and having to communicate together as, as one whole. It's it's quite a, an amazing uh, company and culture to be around. Very good, very good. And so what's the weather look like right now in Gibraltar? It's been around about 25 degrees today. It's a little bit cooler now, so it's about 22. Wow, wow. And I, I believe that the weather is it's not similar than the UK, is it? No, it's nothing like the UK. Um, it's very, <laughs> very similar to Spain, I would say, because we're very close to Spain. I see. Okay. Okay, Stu, so are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Certainly. Anything's, uh, anything's good. Amazing. So welcome to William and the Magic Box. I've got you. You're my best friend. Full of random confessions. I'm just going to play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question. Ready? Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, Stu, ready for the first question? Yes. Let's do it. But just before that, if there is a question you don't have an answer for, you don't want to answer, always can change. Okay, I can take another one. Okay. Right? First question for you is where are you planning to go for your next holidays? A dream holiday or a realistic? Um, both. <laughs> So the realistic holiday will be either Lisbon in Portugal or uh, Barcelona. Okay. Dream holiday will be Bora Bora. What, which one do you think is going to be the, the, the first one to come through? Probably Barcelona. All right. Okay. <laughs> Have you been in Portugal before in Lisbon or will it be the first time? I, no, I've not been to Portugal yet, actually. So that will be a new experience for me. I used to live in Portugal before moving moved to the UK. I used to live in Portugal. I was living in Porto, at the second big city in Portugal. So it's it's quite nice. It's very romantic. It's a very nice city. But Lisbon as well. Lisbon is just like I think it's a postcard of Portugal for sure. Next question, Stu. Let's do it. Before the next question, tell me what's the best part of living in Gibraltar for the. Uh, so for the last three months you've been living there, what's the best part besides the web? Um, I'd probably say everyone that I've met so far are very friendly and helpful. I see. And um, is, is it first, the first language that is English? 
Uh, English, yes, and Spanish. Ah, so they speak uh, both languages. I see. And the English is with the British accent or kind of? Uh, kind of mix. All right, interesting. Cool. Next question for you is, what is your funniest memory of a date that you had? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, gosh. Probably when my date spilled something all over me. <gasps> Oops. How did it happen? <laughs> um, they were just very, very clumsy with their drink. Um, and quite embarrassed afterwards, but it, it was um, a funny moment and memorable. And did the date went quite far or not? It finished that time, when did it happen? <laughs> it, it didn't last much, <laughs> very long. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, let's do it. <laughs> Next question is two, let's do it. Um, what is the biggest prize have you ever won? Oh, not very much. Probably 75 pounds on the English lottery. Wow, when was that? Gosh, I think I was 17 at the time, so many years ago. And how did you use the money? Do you remember what you do? I think if I remember right, I bought clothes. <laughs> good, very good. It was the first time that you won something. Um, no, I'd, I'd won smaller prizes before, but that was the, the most that I'd won. And you're still playing? No, not, not very often. Occasionally, but not, not very often. Good. I'm not the luckiest of people. I remember when I was living in Portugal, I used to play, uh, you know, Euromillion, Euromillion. Yes. I used to, you will remember, my, my colleagues at work, they were playing every weekend. And uh, I think actually I got once as well, but it was like two years or three years or something like that. It was a very small prize, I remember. Never got anything. Yeah, my, my family play um, and they, they occasionally buy me a, a ticket and I rarely win it. It's normally around about the two pound, three pound mark, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not what I life. got. It's not life changing. No, no, no. But it's a good, like, good sign for you to keep trying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Okay, Stu, before the next question, and what's the most challenging part of your job, in your opinion? Um, I, I'd probably say more language. Um, so sometimes it can be a little bit challenging to understand what everyone means um, because you're dealing with many different nationalities um, some things are in broken English so interpreting what someone means or what they truly mean um, isn't always as clear as speaking to someone in a native language um, but yeah that on the whole though it's um, a very friendly and um, embracing environment so it, it it's everything's in good humor and good light, so it's a, a very relaxed environment. Good, very good. <clears throat> oh, again about lottery. If you won the lottery, what would be your first big splurge? Ooh, it would have to be travel for my entire family. You have a big family? No, my intermediate family is quite small, so I'm an only child and just my, my parents. Ah. Um, but then my my parents come from bigger families, so um, there's lots of aunts and uncles and cousins and things like that. How how do you how do you do deal uh, being away from your parents? It's something that you got used to, or you still kind of find hard. No, so um, I left um, my my city when I was around about 21, 20. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been living away from my family for about 20 years. Um, so I've always been about two, three hours away. So living in a different country is a very similar. It's two, three hours on a flight usually. So it's not much difference really. It's either being stuck on the motorway or stuck in a, an aeroplane. So we speak regular. Um, it, it's okay. It's all good. 
when you were saying, I just want to think about myself. Actually, I've been away this around the same time as you as well. Next next year is going to be 20 years that I've been away from wow. Brazil, but I'm not that close as you. <laughs> For me, it's like a long journey to get to my to my family, to my parents. Like uh, right. like more than my, around two days trip, so it's a long way. But as you said, you just get used to it. One, you know what I mean? I think it, one, when I think I think parents they raise their child for the, for the world, not for themselves. So yeah. in the end of the day, just want to see us happy and try to go. You know what I mean? After our dreams, our our life in general. So it's, totally, uh, my parents I look on life. Yeah, it's all good then, end of the day. It's a bit, it's a bit, in the beginning, it might be, it's a bit, it's a bit difficult, you know what I mean? But you get used to it, and one point, it's just like, life just goes on. Next question, let's do it, let's do it. Next question for you is, um, where do you see yourself living when you retire? Um, I've always, thought of Australia would be uh, one of the places, but mm. who knows? Um, life has been very unpredictable lately, so who knows? And why Australia? Um, I have an auntie there, so she left when she was in her 20s and she is now in her 80s. And it's a place that I've always wanted to go but haven't been, so um, that's definitely another one on the list to travel to. <laughs> Your list is very kind of broad, isn't it? Like, it is. England, yeah. Bora Bora, Australia, yeah. <laughs> Next question, let's do it. Before the next one, uh, tell me about your experience living in Malta. Oh, um, so in Malta, I lived there for just over two years. Um, I moved there after being made redundant from a job that I'd worked in for almost 13 years. Wow. So it was um, a very much, let's see what happens sort of experience, time for a change, something new. Um, I rented my home out and just packed up the car and drove there. So it was a very, let's see what this next adventure brings. So it's a. Uh, a challenge, but it was a, a very rewarding one, and it, it's got me to meet very amazing people. Uh, and in the job that I'm in now, I, I'm still lucky enough to be with those people that I, I met back in Malta and working with them very closely, even if it's remotely. So it's something that I'll always be thankful for. I see. And I believe the weather in Malta is kind of the same in, in Gibraltar. It's a bit warmer. Yeah, so it's. Is a, it? uh, yeah, it's a, a lot warmer, actually. Um, Typically, yeah. Mm. Okay. Next question is, what is your big, uh, uh, who is your biggest hero? Um, I'd probably say my dad. Tell me why. Um, he's someone that's always been there for me. Um, and he always provides for his family and will do anything for anyone to help. Um, even in the most challenging times in his life, um, he is always there to help someone else. Very good, very good. Next question. <laughs> Let's do it. Next question for you is, um, describe yourself in a positive word and a negative word. Um, loyal, um, negative, I'd probably have to say more than one word, but I don't suffer fools gladly. Explain that to me. Um, so someone that's irresponsible or they lie, I don't have very much patience for. I see, I see. <laughs> Always being like that? Um, maybe um, life experiences have made me cross paths with people that aren't very honest to the point where um, I'm not as tolerable as I used to be. Hmm, interesting, very interesting. Next question for you is to let's do it. 
the next one, tell me, when, when you close your eyes and you think about Birmingham, what's the, the, the best memories that comes to your mind? Oh, I would probably say being in my teenage years, partying and dancing with my friends in a nightclub. Oh, <laughs> I've, been there, I've been there once actually, a few years ago. And uh, it was a good experience. And I remember that, I actually, honest, I thought this, I think it's because um, I've been living in London and I, 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 I knew it that Birmingham was the second biggest city in the UK. So I was expecting something like London, something like, that. <laughs> like London. And when I got there, I was like, are you sure that we are in Birmingham? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I lived, sorry, I really had a good time. I think it was, uh, I remember this big building, like this glass building in, in the center of the city when you get get off the, 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 the coach. It's, I think a shopping center, I think. I'm not sure. I remember that, the first thing that stood to my head when I got there. South, South Virginia yeah. is quite iconic. I see. Next question for you is, what would be the title of your memoir? Oh. You tried. Ah, very good, very good. Next question. Let's do it. Next question for you is, ooh. What is the most dramatic argument you ever had? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the most recent one, probably. Um, when I found out that my husband was um, wasn't the person they thought they were. Mm. Was very dramatic. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's kind of sorted now, kind of over it, or it's still... Very recent. <laughs> <laughs> I know those dramatic arguments, you know what I mean, it can be difficult sometimes, but in the end of the day, you know what I mean, we always take a lesson out of it, we always learn something out of it. It's, it's difficult, it's hard, you know what I mean? Okay, and yeah. My, my outlook is life is too short, so... Yeah. It's done stop wasting time absolutely and sometimes as well sometimes when you go through those moments you don't realize you don't take the message just take the message in the future when you look back and you go like now i understand why that happened i i kind of think um, sometimes it's too much to try to understand and isn't necessary mm -hmm. um, and it's not necessarily your need to understand. It's sometimes the other person's. Um, so in, in my experience, it's not my need to understand what the other person is going through um, because I have tried. Um, mm -hmm. And if they're not in that place, then it's time for me to move forward with my journey, not to assist them with theirs. Very good, very good message, very good. Next question for you is to, let's do it. Okay, so before the next question, in your opinion, what's the, what's the most stereotype of England that's true? And what's the most stereotype that, uh, about English that's wrong, is false, in your opinion? I've got two, is that okay? Say again? I've got two. Yes, absolutely. So when you say you're from England, people automatically say London. I see. And they always think you drink tea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, that, that would probably be the wrong one. <laughs> and the right one, and the, 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 the right one, which one would be? Um, Ooh. I think generally English people are quite polite to the point where they don't always say what what they want to say. Interesting, very interesting point actually, very interesting point. 
Next question for you is, what do you miss the most from your childhood and why? Um, probably playing with my cousins and family and friends when I was younger and not having a care of the real world and adult life. I know during that time, I remember Christmas took so long to arrive, our birthday as well, we were expecting <laughs> our birthday the whole year, and now, in a blink of eyes, just go like that already. Yeah. No, no one warned us enough about bills in real life. Yes, absolutely. And actually, also, it's so right, isn't it? At the time, you didn't think about those bills, about anything. You just want to <laughs> live. You just want to live by the day. You know what I mean? You just want to yeah. play and enjoy. Yes, yes, you're totally right. Now it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Let's... Okay, Stu from Birmingham. Next question for you is, what is the biggest difference between you and your best friends? Oh. I'm probably more reckless. Mm. And what's the big similarity between both between you and them? Um, probably our age. <laughs> They're all the same, are all the same age. <laughs> yeah. She's a year younger. But lives there in Gibraltar as well, or in the UK? No, no, she lives in the UK. Ah, okay. All right. Ready for another one? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. For the next one, I believe you are gay, yes? Yes. Um, are you uh, out? Are you okay to talk about? Yes, yeah, very out. <laughs> okay, perfect. So tell me, did you always have the support of your family being gay? Um, yeah, so when I told them, um, I was quite young, and yeah, it was, yeah, this is very much this is me, and they embraced it. Walk me through of the day when you told them, was something happen? How did you say, okay, is the, is the time now? I just feel like I'm going to tell them. How did it happen? You can share. Oh, so I had been meaning to tell them for quite a while and um, it was a very difficult time within the family because people were sick and it was um, not the sort of sickness where people got over. So I, I sort of delayed telling people because it didn't feel right to add that pressure. Um, so it had got to a point where um, it, was, it was time to say regardless of what was going on or relatives passing away. Um, so it was quite a funny moment. It was cooking dinner with my mom and a big disaster happened in the kitchen and food exploded everywhere. Um, to the point where there was food on the kitchen ceiling. Uh, wow. <laughs> so it was very memorable. <laughs> um, but but my, my mum was fine. And, um, we had that conversation and she asked her questions and I told her the answers. So it was, it was good. Do you think the parents, they, they, knew, they, they always know about their child? I think they know us better than I anybody. Think so, yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I would say so. Yeah, sometimes they don't want maybe to, to go into it, they don't want to think about it, just want to live on the side, you know what I mean? It just mm -hmm. happen with the neighbors, with other family, that never happened to our family. It's always like that. Yes. Some of them. Yeah. Cool, very good. Right, Stu, uh, do, uh, do you have a unique ability that you think no one has or you never met before? No, I, I don't think I'm um, anything extraordinary. All right, so I'll get another one. <laughs> I have one, look, I can show you, look, what I can do with my feet, look. <laughs> but actually, but, yeah. actually but, but you know what, actually, I had an interview last year um, with someone from America, and I was well, the same question, I said, oh, I can do that, and he said, I can do it with the both hands, and I cannot do it with this hand, just this one I can do. I was like, oh! My no. aunt can do something similar, where her thumb actually bends the other way, Oh, wow. Wait, a little bit strange, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Next question for you is, what does your best friends do that comfort you the most? Uh, um, they're always willing to listen to my problems and give usually sound advice. 
<laughs> and sometimes you like when she tells you off when you are wrong for some reason you've done something wrong you take her like her. <laughs> um sometimes <laughs> sometimes i'll have my own um stubborn opinion way of dealing with me to to follow your stubbornness <laughs> yeah to totally but though she is normally right i hate that thing. it's difficult to admit sometimes isn't it yeah okay <laughs> next question still right next question for you is oh i like i love this question send away a message to someone but you don't need to know who this message is for Just the person who will be watching you know that the message for this person. Mm. Oh, that's strange. Um, oh. <laughs> um, alive or dead? Either way. Okay. Um, probably that um, I often think of you and have fond memories. Very sweet, very sweet. Very... Next question. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the show so far, too. Yeah, very good. Yeah, good. Let's do it. Before the next one, tell me what's the most challenging part of li living in Gibraltar, in your opinion? Oh, um, the total honest answer is nothing so far. Hmm. Okay. Um, Nothing about living here has been difficult. Right. And um, in your opinion, when, for example, I've never been there before. If I would go for the very first time, what would be your piece of advice to do it, or to visit, or to take with me? What would be? Uh, I've recently had a friend visit for a few days, um, so that was good to do some touristy uh, activities. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we enjoyed taking the cable car up to the top of the rock and seeing the monkeys that was um oh. very touristy but it, it was it was very nice i see experience and there is like a time of the year that's the best time to go there or is any any time of the year in your opinion uh well, she she visited a few weeks ago um and it, it was perfect um i've only been here a few months myself so it's still all very new to me uh, there's still lots to see and lots to visit you still a tourist totally <laughs> <laughs> right, what is the best advice you have received? Don't take yourself too seriously. Mm, good one. Next question. Let's do this too. Right, next question for you is, what scares you the most about your future? Scares. It scares, yeah. What scares the most about your future? Um, nothing. I'm actually quite excited about the future. Wow, very good. Very good. You always been like that, like never being afraid of what the future holds or... I probably say when I was younger, I used to be scared of things. Um, as I've got older, um, I kind of see everything as a, a new challenge and a new experience. Um, never anything to be scared of anymore or always something to learn from and what's your star sign uh, aries oh ah, interesting very interesting the 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 childhood the childish of the whole circles of um uh, astrology next question let's do it before the next one tell me um What's the most typical typical thing about Birmingham? Like that it sticks out of England. There's something local, something um, like unique over there. Uh, other than the people, um, I would probably say um, the city center, the bull ring, and the jewelry quarter. They're quite iconic places. Um, good places to visit, and uh, the canals and the waterfront. It's a, a good place to socialize and meet up with friends and party. Okay, very good. Next question for you is, who has been the most influential person in your life and why? 
I'd say my grandmother, um, she was always someone who was very close to me growing up. Um, I spent a lot of time with her, um, learned many, many things from her, and she was a, a huge part of my life. Oh, very sweet, very sweet. Okay, I have three questions left for you, okay? Okay. You're very easy answering questions, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Right, next question is, tell us a funny story that have, or a moment that happened to you when you were at school, child at school. I can't think of any super funny moments, um, other than probably doing something really clumsy and tripping over and making a fool out of myself. But, uh, nothing, no, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing that not springs to mind. Not even a teenager, teenager time? Um, You've always been this very um, central, like student, you know what I mean? Follow the rules, everything was always far from it. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably as a teenager, um, I'd probably just say doing something stupid and reckless. I've probably got more memorable things there in my later life and most recent life than um, I have as a child. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna ask those, okay? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and um, do you still keep in touch with, uh, like, let's say, um, some friends from, from your school when you were a child or a teenager or this kind of... Yeah, yeah I, I've still got um, quite a few friends on the likes of Facebook and things like that that are um, still close and follow and, a message from time to time so yeah it's quite nice very good very good two questions left let's do it just wondering are you alone or you have someone around you no just me as i thought you had someone around you besides this handsome man behind you in the in the, in the wall no. <laughs> no, just my friend here that's it <laughs> Next question for you is, what is the worst pickup line have you ever heard? Oh, there was one recently, um, and it was something to do with um, the stars in the sky, and it was so bad I don't really remember the whole, the whole thing, but it was... Um, something to do with the stars in the sky and beauty and making you, you, you dream of stars and heaven and future and something <laughs> corny like that. I sort of switched off to be honest. It didn't work, it didn't work. Well, there's nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the last question, Stu. Let's switch. Let's play. I was about to say they star didn't didn't <laughs> it got dark straight away. The stars went to line that day, no. It starts raining straight away. <laughs> right, let's go for the last question too. Let's do it. The last one. Right, what's the best advice have you ever given? Ooh. Um follow your gut. Good. And do you think the person who you gave is following their gut? I think so, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Very and good. They, very made, good. they made the right decision at the time of the advice, anyways. Yeah. Very good, very good. It's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm okay. going to give away some words. Just tell me one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Let's start with religion. Control. Politics. Ooh. Corruption. Okay. Love. Ooh, hate. Money. Greed. Family. Love. Sex. Passion. Life. Too short. Fear. Challenge. Friendship. 
forever. Desire. Instinct. Hmm, interesting. Regret. None. Success. Future. Wish. Oh, I'm not too sure. Um, dreams. Okay. How about happiness? Ooh, happiness. I'd probably have to say live the moment. Good. One word for Malta. Mm, weather. <laughs> One word for Gibraltar. Future. Mm -hmm. And the last one now, Birmingham. Heart. Oh, sweet, sweet. Let's say now I'm going to meet your lovely friend, best friend, for a tea, a cup of tea. And I'm going to ask her, what is the most beautiful thing about Stu and what's something that he still needs to improve on? What do you think she'll tell me? She'd say I'm too kind, I imagine. Um, and I probably need to be more... Um, selfish or put myself first more you think i you, you are improving on this or not i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start it's for trying <laughs> miserably but trying <laughs> good very good very good at least are conscious as well <laughs> Okay. Right, let's play it out. It's two and the magic box, and you can ask me a question. It's two. You can ask me a question now. So why did you start the magic box? Right, good question. The reason uh, the magic box is always uh, is always a dream that was somewhere very special that I was trying to find. Um, you know, sometimes in life, a lot of people they they are looking for their. Uh, their past in life, they're looking for their, their passion, they're looking for that that reason why they came to these worlds. And um, on and off, I remember being a teenager, you know what I mean, when you start to realize about, okay, what do you want to be when I grow up? You know, this kind of, um, and I remember I wanted to be, first of all, I remember I want to be Michael Jackson <laughs> when I was seven years old. <laughs> so I, want to, I always wanted to be, I remember I'd like to be a lawyer when I was 18. I, I just loved, I like reading, and at the time, I, I, you know, I don't think I, when I look back, I don't think I'll be a good lawyer, but at the time I was so into it, so I could be a lawyer, I could be a teacher as well, but um, as soon as I became an adult, when I turned an adult, I remember like meeting people around me, and they, I remember they are talking about, oh my God, I, I have a, my dream job, or I do what I'm meant to do in life, I love what I do, you know what I mean? And I was always asking myself, my God, I don't, I don't think I, I I, I was trying to ask my, the same question to myself and I couldn't find like a, a, a genuine answer, you know what I mean? Like I could, I could say things that I like doing it, I do like doing it, but I couldn't find this, you know what I mean? Okay, that's what I, I like to do, I want to do. And I'm very fortunate and very grateful to say that last year, um, when I, the first lockdown, when the words, you know what I mean, went up and down and... Uh, mm -hmm. I went for a run in the park and, and this idea just came to my head and I was like, oh my God. I remember the time was really, I, it was so powerful that I really, I was running in the park and I, I stopped for a while and I was looking like in the air, I was like, oh my God, that's, you know, I, have, I, I, I literally like my, my thoughts, my, all my sense kind of stopped for a, for a moment. And, um, and that, I, I, yeah, that's a genuine thing and fun enough, this kind of interaction that I'm doing with you right now, when I do the magic box, it's something that I've always done in my life, yeah? Like as a teenager, as a, even, even as, a, as a child, like even an adult, I was going, meeting friends, I was like, oh, tell me something interesting about yourself, about your childhood, or what do you like the most about your heart? So this kind of question. And when I analyze myself back, i always done that. Of course, not in front of the camera, not like in a worldwide proportion, you know what I mean, with people different part of the world, but I've always done that. I always had these interactions. So yeah, so the matchbox, something that always was hidden, 
was somewhere there that I, I was looking for it. I was trying to find and it came, I, I think it came the right time. I think it came in a moment where the world was very fractured. You know, everyone was very in a place where no one was expecting to be. It was a very uh, difficult time. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I had this, you know what I mean, this idea that um, I found my path. So that's um, my genuine answer. It just came from a genuine place that I was always looking for it. Good? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I just hope I had a good Did you... Say again, say again. I can relate to some of those actually. Yes, you know sometimes. Yeah, you know sometimes in life, you know, you, you sometimes you keep searching for for things in your life, and sometimes what I've but do you know what the, the fun thing is? I knew one day I would find this path. You do not know I me. Mean? I remember talking to friends in the past. I was like, oh my god, I wish I could say, okay, that's what I want to do for life. But I, at the moment, I'm like, I know I, I don't have the answer now, but I know one point will come. I, at one point, I always had that in the back of my mind. You know, I didn't know what was, but I knew that. Uh, you know what I mean? One point will come. And to be honest to you, is to if I if I would see someone doing that, like without, knowing, I think I would like to, to be doing that. You know what I mean? If I if I yeah. if I didn't have an idea, if I would see someone doing that, I was like, oh my god, I'd love to be doing that. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's my genuine answer to you. Thank you. I just hope you had a good time. I just hope I, I made your day differently, your evening. You know, I just hope you Definitely. had a good time. I have, yes. Thank you. Very good, very good. Before you go, message, okay, I'll post something that inspires you in life. Um, the thing that inspires me most in life is um, meeting new and different people with a, a different outlook than myself. Yeah, it says a lot. I, 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 I read the other day somewhere saying if you want to like be a better person, or, you know what I mean, be, uh, like as a free spirit, be around people not from your status, like your financial status, uh, be around people that don't speak your language, you know what I mean? So it's it's a way for you to explore the other, you know what I mean, other culture around and explore yourself. And I think you learn. Life is, is, a, is a college that you just uh, like go through living. To you know? Totally. Uh, every, everyone's got a different outlook on life, so it, it's refreshing to experience yeah. someone else's outlook or journey. Um, absolutely. It makes you think as well, so it, it's always enlightening. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for the interview. It's you. It was Take a pleasure, care. okay? Thanks bye -bye. so much for the interview. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like share it and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you'd like to be part of the show as well first subscribe to our channel and after that just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and i see you there bye bye see you next time